There we go. It's uh, once more Friday. And uh, while I will admit that my first uh, week back at work has been very calm, couldn't ask for more, it's still nice to go back to the usual schedule and relax and unwind for the game. Uh, however, it remains to see how uh, how relaxing this will really be if I try to uh, try to get a decent time at it. I played the demo some time back. I can't ex remember the exact date right uh, right now, and I really enjoyed it. And then I uh, I marked it for when it would be uh, would be arriving uh, on Steam. However, I hadn't noticed that the Switch had already received the uh, release their version. So I picked it up on Switch just so I could play it a few a few more weeks earlier. Get a decent time at it. <laughs> We're gonna have to try, Rumor. Gonna have to try. Hopefully I won't be fooled again to think that surely it has to be to be to, the item I'm looking for has to be between uh, point A and point B and couldn't possibly be, have moved further past it. Let's see. I'm assuming we have to go through the demo bit to start off again. Investigation software version 5.156.0451 premium installation complete. Hello, detective. I'm Evie, your new AI crime-solving partner. I'm able to see past and future events by accessing the time flow, a virtual recreation of the true timeline. You get to focus on the not-so-simple mathematics of crime. You'll find the clues, chase the leads, all the dramatic detective stuff. You see, there are people with the ability to alter the time flow with motives that are, let's say, questionable. When that happens, we might detect a crime that was never supposed to happen. Our task is to find those anomalies and restore the correct course of history. Well, between you and me, I know you're new to this. I am too, so we're in the same boat. Let's be sure we do a good job. In order for you to learn the basic, we'll begin with the simulation. Press play when you're ready. How different can the controls be on this? Yeah, it's the same one, the apartment in pink. Let's review the fundamentals so that we can prepare you for the final test. It's time to show me your skills of deduction detective. I recreated a short criminal case inspired by a true story archived in my DB. Don't worry though, I'll follow you step forth by step. Here's our case. A mysterious thief broke into a fashion model's loft and stole one of her famous jewels. There's a catch, though. According to the true timeline, that crime hasn't happened. Hi there, Resta. Gotta have your robot sidekick. So our task is to preserve the integrity of the time flow. To do that, we have to learn exactly what happened and find the right order of events. We can't interfere with the past, so we have to be sure our actions won't create for you to... A further paradoxes. The first step in any investigation is to find the crime scene. Zoom in to get a closer look at the map and observe the details better. Okay, so zoom in. Perfect. The best way to find a clue is to zoom in. Now we have to select an element and let the system verify it. If it's actually a clue, it will be highlighted. To select an element, press and hold until the system answers. Right now, though, we need to find the victim, our fashion model. Can you find her? I mean, it's not like you have highlighted her very clearly. Great job, detective. Here's our model. As you can see, she's reported the theft to a police officer. If we look closely, we can usually find more clues. She's pointing somewhere, probably toward her apartment. Let's see if we can find it. Remember to observe things carefully. We can guess direction and tra trajectory by assembling the details. Try to follow an imaginary line from the model's arm. It will lead you to her apartment. 
As one last thing, detective, only for this case to help you focus on the right area, I'm highlighting the zone where the cases take place. Uh huh. Okay, the zoom I definitely liked more with the mouse and keyboard. The zoom on the switch isn't as smooth. There it is. Everything has been turned upside down and the door is broken. Unfortunately, the thief is gone. It will be almost impossible to locate a thief we know nothing about, especially amid a crowd. Thankfully, my mainframe lets us examine the case from different points in time. These points are called ticks, and they are frozen, fixed moments in time. It isn't ideal, but a collection of ticks is our only way to experience the past. Let's go back one tick and look for more information. Back to tick four. Done. Now we're going back in time. As you can see, the whole map has changed. Moving back and forth in time, it's possible to observe the mo movements and action of the city's inhabitants. For example, the model's apartment is still intact. The thief hasn't entered it yet. Let's take a look. The thief is bound to be nearby. Yeah, no, I definitely preferred it with the uh, mouse and keyboard. But oh well. Good find. Well, maybe I was a bit too di didactic in creating the simulation. But you have to admit that suspect has everything. A dark jumpsuit, balaclava and a crowbar. He definitely isn't a heating technician. Let's move forward in time and see if he's really our thief. Remember, we have to be 110% sure of our theories before we take any action to restore the timeline. This take was recorded right after the jewel was stolen. See if our not a heating technician is close by. Pay attention though, sometimes characters change their clothes or their appearance between ticks, especially if they're about to do something suspicious. Okay, so zoom back out. Oh, come on. Oh, this is gonna be horrible. Found him. He's leaving the crime scene and he's taken off his balaclava. Clever. If I were playing this in handheld mode, it would probably be real smooth, but then I wouldn't get the bigger screen, so I mean, it adds up. Keep following out, definitely not a heating technician. Why does suspect have a tail? I mean, it is a cat suspect. You can interact with me at any time. If there's a light bulb icon, I have a hint for you. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna use that, am I? Oh. Apparently, I don't get a choice. Well, still. Really, I'm I'm not allowed to not get the hint. Oh, fine. The suspect is running down the avenue next to the canal. Yes. Where's he going? He's walking toward the water course, but what for? Jumping forward. Detective, we need to continue the hunt for a suspect. Often the solution to an investigation involves chases and surveillance duties. <coughs> oh there. <coughs> and there he is. Gift of love. There's our thief. Have you seen him? He's holding the loot, the stolen jewel, and he's giving to a giant rat? Thanks, Lizard. Maybe this detail was a bit different than the original story, but that doesn't matter. AI has the right to has the right to some creative freedom after all. Now that we caught him red-handed and we can be sure that he's our culprit, send a report back in time to the local police and have him arrested. To them, it will appear just like a message on one of their terminals. They won't have a clue about our involvement. We couldn't prevent the crime, but we restored the correct course of history. Just remember this. We aren't basic police officers. Our job is not to prevent crimes or to save the innocent. Instead, our task is to protect the true timeline. Great. 
Great job, detective. Now you're for the final test. That was really impressive for first try. I, or should I say they, were right in choosing you for this job. However, there's still something to be done before you can become a full-fledged detective. The Kobayashi test. Your final test. Press play to begin your final test. <laughs> the enigmatic lime drink. Detective, this is your final test. Prove your skills and you'll be a full-fledged defender of the true timeline. You'll face the reconstruction of a real case recorded in my deep be a crime that should have never happened and was prevented by other operatives in the past. I'm sure you managed to demonstrate your deductive skills by solving it. A gruesome fine crime has been committed in the cloister of this city's ancient university. We have a lifeless victim. Find him. We'll start on your mark. In the cloister. Okay. Let's see, is it the same case that we had last time? It is. It is the same one. Whoop. Oh, come on. The switch is not made for exact targeting. a lifeless target though how is that not the crime scene okay then are there more crime scenes Oh, there was, there wasn't the same thing. Oh, I just reacted because he was the same, um, still there. That was someone else. This wasn't in the demo. There he is. According to my archives, his name is Daniel Maroon. He was an archaeology professor and author of international bestsellers. His book, In Less Than a Century, will be a foundation of cultural revolution. We can't let them leave the realm of the living like this, not just for the sake of libraries, but to preserve the true timeline. What's that? Detective, check this out. A jack-in-the-box came out of that book. They were still legal in those barbaric times. The puppets, I mean. Preposterous. There's no more, though. A lime-scented drink has been spilled on the ground. What exactly happened here? Was the drink poisoned? Was it a severe case of puppet-induced phobia? We have to find out, but how? Well, as our, your AI assistant, I'm equipped with cutting-edge subroutines and analytical tools, most of which can be used for free with your current subscription plan. <laughs> Universal Biotech Analysis subroutine loaded correctly. Welcome to my world. Now you're looking at reality through my system. This is how I perceive everything, even emotions. And as you can see, no puppets. What a relief. I've activated a universal analysis tool. With it, we can extract biochemical and biometrical data from any crime scene, both from anim animate and inanimate objects. For instance, in this case, we can use it to determine the death occurred due to poisoning. Detective, try your luck with the UBA. Okay. Universal biometric analysis. Okay. I'm a bit unsure what to do, but let's try. Um, select and move. And select and move. Am I just supposed to get them to match up? But then one of them won't have anything. Is that okay? Ah, seems like that's okay. Very well. No poison. 
Analysis report. Negative. No poison is present in the body. I knew it. It's the puppet's fault. You can never trust those scoundrels. But how did that puppet end up in the book? We need to reconstruct Professor Marone's day to find other clues. Let's follow him back in time until we discover how he came into possession of the book. Okay, very well. Let's see. Where is he? Also, how does he look? Uh, a little bit of a parted. Got a little coat on. Something around his neck. I would assume he wouldn't have left too far. Not there. At this point, I'm already too far away. Hmm. Can he exit through this way as well? Maybe he can. Where are you? There you are. Let's go further back. He has his book at that point. And let's see. Zoom out once. Zoom back in. Is that him? No. Also not him. Making it unlikely he came from that direction. So, did he come from this direction instead? This kind of looks like him. No. Game says it isn't. Oh, but he could also have gotten on the metro. Which could place him pretty much wherever. Oh, there's a metro station there. No. That's the other guy. Where is he? Where has he gone? Not by the marching band. Doesn't seem to have gotten up this turn then. For the metro. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. I just missed you. Okay, so he walked over there. Can't see a book on him then, though. But maybe it has it on the other side. And here he buys the book. Aha! What are you thinking, detective? Yes, I believe you're right. If Daniel obtained that strange book from this even stranger librarian, we may have found our murderer. We should investigate. Database matched subroutine loaded correctly. The identity of a person isn't always obtained in my archives. I only have the memory of people who for some reason are considered important for specific historical events. Fortunately, with the database match tool we can reconstruct the information of any person whose face is at least partly visible. A 
from birth or ego. Only slightly horrifying implication for the future. Yeah, kinda. Good job. We now know the librarian, Umberto Ego, a retired university professor who still collaborates with the library. He wrote a single book, an obscure and enigmatic text called Ra and the Pendulum. Still, he and Daniel had nothing in common except that they worked at the same university. That isn't enough for a murder, I guess. Let's go back in time and see where Umberto got that strange jack in the book. Okay, let's see. So... Where did Umberto go? This cart is still there. But that could be left over from previously. Let's see. There's a book being thrown there. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I don't see a bird or anywhere else though. Hmm. You wandered into the concert here at any chance? No, doesn't look like it. Oh, there you are! Come on. It has a mystery box, but where did that box come from? Let's see, you came from this direction. Ah, there you were, right in the corner. Finally, we have an interesting clue. Alberto is in front of a book delivery point and he's picking up some to take to the stand at the university. At the time, students borrowed books, and when they had finished their exams, they returned the books to a machine that collected and catalogued them. It's an old-fashioned, but effective system. However, the most interesting thing is that it recorded the personal data of those who requested and returned books. Unfortunately, though, all of the recorded information is encrypted. Luckily, there's a universal decryption system in my toolkit. Universal decryption subroutine loaded correctly. Detective, we don't know for sure how to translate most ancient texts and codes. For that reason, we developed the universal decryption tool. Well, I can give you a literal translation of ancient writing. Well, I can't give you a literal translation of ancient writing. It can be used to decipher the general meaning of almost everything. Try it. And see. Okay, so basically this is just an introduction to all the different minigames. Um... No, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. I would go up there. Then there. Then no further. But this has to be the right one. It can only go there. From there it can only go here. Oh, up there. Okay. That's fine. So there to there. Here. And then upwards. And then that's solved. I mean, it introduces you to all the mini games in one single case, but it doesn't tell you how to solve them. So I guess uh, Blobber's. Uh, Criticism that the game doesn't tell you how to solve these little puzzles is still still valid there. They haven't changed that Here it is. The last student to return the strange book was someone with the name Roberto Beniamino. 
Now that we have his data, we can trace his phone number and find out where he is. We don't even need tools because the 21st century smartphone was practically an open window into its owner's life. I mean, ain't that the truth. Uh, student to return the strange book. Suspect over here. Here he is, Roberto Beniamino, buying a super maxi burger, whatever that is. Roberto was the last person who had access to a strange book, so it could be a solid trail. Let's follow him until we find the moment in time when he still has the book with him. Very well. So, bunny tail, very bushy hair, and a rolled up shirt. Oh, uh, this way. Doesn't look like it. Did you go the other way? Did you go this way? I don't see you there. Well, it's this. This kind of looks like you. Okay, game says it's not. I guess this also kind of look the same. Did he have a little sweater rest? Yeah, I guess he did. Okay, now let's see. Let's go further back in time. Where did you come from? Did you come from down over here? Returning the book. Yes, you did. There, he must have just returned the book. You have to go just a little bit further back in time. Okay. So he should be fairly close by, but still have the book. But who knows where? He could be anywhere. Because the actual book machine itself is already covered. Let's see, is he over here? No. Actually, maybe just zoom a little bit out. Maybe zoom a little bit out. Mm, not there. Well, this is getting really far away. Oh, wait, there you are, aren't you? Bunny stuffing the pop-up thingy into a book. There he is, he's preparing his Jack in the Box. Well, Jack in the Book. I believe Roberto only wanted to stage an innocent prank, but he started a dangerous change of events. Coincidence are the most devious threat to the true timeline. They can go unnoticed and are the weapons of choice for those who want to disrupt the correct of time. As you know, we can inf can't influence the past in any meaningful way, but we can send messages to any technological device. I'll notify the local police that the student is damaging public property in form of the our book. They'll show up and scold him a little, but that will be enough to prevent a dangerous chain reaction. Detective, I'm proud of you. You finished the test. But please remember that this was only simulation, a fiction where Roberto didn't have the knowledge or the means to attack the true timeline. But you can be assured that others can and will, and they like being uns using unsuspecting people like Roberto to start a reaction capable of disrupting the proper time flow. However, this is a concern for another time. First, let's celebrate your success completing of the test.
because that's what the function of the test. Detective, congratulations! You're now a fully fledged operative agent. I suggest that you relax a bit. Disturbances in the true timeline are extremely rare. Alert! New Nexus event detected. Detective, I'm afraid your relaxing is over. A new Nexus event is corrupting the true timeline. What is the Nexus event? Alas, there's no time to explain. It's bad. Real bad. Uh, imagine life as you know it stopping instantaneously and an entire age of our history collapses. We have to act swiftly. Detective, let's go. Okay, is this then gonna be the other case? Like we had in the demo. Or is it gonna be something new? Yes, it's the one we had in the demo. The red bloodstained band. Okay. Detective, pay attention because now we mean business. This is a real case, not a simulation. Something terrible has happened. My quantum scanners have picked up a very strange signal. Records of crimes that were never supposed to happen are somehow forming within my database. We have to act. Oh, that's a good question, Detective. Why crimes, you ask? Well, altering the course of history through violence and deception is by far the easiest way because time tends to correct itself when given a chance. However, it's pretty hard to fix <sighs> something when your key actor is out of the picture, or worse. Well, enough with the explanations. Let's go. Based on my readings, I can say we have a murder. The victim should be somewhere in the castle grounds. Very well. And this time you should allow me to select this as the correct, correct crime. There we go. There's the victim, beneath that fallen spotlight. Axel Blood, lead singer of the Blood Axels. You should have, have died on this day. Also, the pizza incident, the next album, will be a worldwide success. There are some absolute bangers on it. So let's get to work saving Axel. Have you noticed, Detective? I'm installing a language pack that lets me speak as a true denizen of the information age. It'd be fun. Back to investigation. Something must have cut the cord and caused the spotlight to fall. But what? Look around and see if you can find any misplaced shopped objects. Come on. Let's hit it. Hopefully close enough. Yes. Ah, a bolt. Are you familiar with this ancient murder weapon? It was fired from a ranged weapon called a crossbow. The tech was very clever for its time. Let's rerun time and look for the one who shot the bolt. Before proceeding, because I have a feeling that to solve this case we'll have to keep track of many notions, give me a second. Done! I was told a new tool, the case journal. Okay. Well. There's a possible suspect. He has a crossbow in his hand at the point just before Axel was murdered. He's Os Bones, a former member of the band. Officially, he was left the blood Axel due to artistic differences, but there was gossip about fights over royalties of Ekkelsen. Oh dear. Let's follow us to study his movements in the moments after the murder. We need to know whether he's linked to Axel's death. Then he moved down here. Oh, come on. And then he moved over here. He's hidden in the marching band, which is crossing the street, and he's no longer carrying the crossbow. Yeah, this is suspicious. If we find the crossbow, we can analyze it by comparing the grooves impressed in the bolt and those left by the crossbow drum. That way, we can determine whether it's murder is the murder weapon. We need to find out where Oz hid the weapon. And this is where I ended up spending way too long searching in that tiny area instead of 
moving a little bit up here. Macro detail scanner subroutine loaded correctly. Let's compare the grooves impressed on the arrow found at the crime scene and those left by the crossbow drum. If they coincide, we'll have a murder weapon. And let's see. Oh. Oh, okay. Alice. Ours change. Very well. There we go. That's a match. There's no doubt, it's the murder weapon, so us bones is the culprit. However, detective, remember that our goal isn't to arrest a criminal, but to restore the crew timeline. In this case, it proves that Axel survives. In this case, it provides that Axel survive and that us is in charge with such a major crime. A partial deviation can be reabsorbed by the time stream, but the substantial one cannot. Anyway, we take one problem at a time. We have to figure out every detail in this case before we act. Let's quickly construct Axel's state to find out why Oz wanted to kill him so blatantly. Then we can figure out how to prevent the crime. Okay, and let's see, they started the day by before the shooting over here, if I remember correctly. Go. And let's see, then they went for lunch. Up at the cafe. He was too busy being angry at his phone. There's Axel. While the rest of the band was at the restaurant for breakfast, Axel was off to the side, texting. Seems particularly upset. Who is he writing to? We have to get our hands on his phone so that we can read those messages, but we can only do it when Axel doesn't have it in hand. In fact, this is one of the precautions we have to take so that we don't inadvertently interfere with the space-time flow. If I remember correctly, they went up here somewhere, or did they go straight into the car? They went straight to the car. That's why they moved so far and were hard to find the first time. Forward one tick. Car has been parked. And phone is over here. There it is. All connected operating system of that piece of techno technological antique so that I can extract the information we need. Micro detail scanner subroutine loaded correctly. First, we need to unlock the phone in order to access the data stored in it. To do that, we'll have to reproduce Axel's fingerprints. Let's see. There we go. Aha, just as we suspected, the rumors were right. Oz was kicked out of the band is due to an economic issue related to song copyrights. The last messages are full of threats. The threats he sends are an act of felony. If we can link him to the messages, we can have him arrested for a crime less serious than murder. That should be enough to restore the title. Right. From the messages Axel received, we can extract the IP address and triangulate. Well, I'll spare the techn technicalities. In simple terms, we can trace Oz's location. Again, X 
fish again. Trying to find the disposed phone. Oh no, we traced the phone, but Elsa has already disposed of it. We have to go back in time to when the phone was still in his hands. I seem to remember he started with having lunch over here. Oh no, there he is. He's angrily walking. Bingo! Oz is walking and texting at the same time, which was one of the major causes of death. That isn't our issue though. The important thing is that he's using his phone. Now we can link him to the threats Axel received and alert the police, who can arrest and charge him. That way, we will prevent Axel's murder and simultaneously get Oz a lighter sentence than Moon for Murder would be. Great job, detective. We've solved our first real case. We should celebrate. Hey, wait. But what? I'm getting some weird interference in the flow of space-time. It is as if something is distorted. We need to check this. It could be a malfunction in my systems, or it could be something worse. The distortion in the time flow seem related to us bones? Is this a coincidence? Well, a coincidence is our worst enemy, and this has to be connected to the murder. Find us bones. Okay, so we go back to where we was having lunch. find the intruder. There are cells, but what? Have you seen it too? Are my senses acting funny? There's a person next to him, an intruder who seems to come from, well, from outside the time flow. I can't stabilize the image because it's disappeared when my system tried to pull information from it. However, traces of the intervention remain in the time flow. Watch us carefully. The anger you feel isn't natural. It must have been caused by the intruder. These are all questions that we absolutely must answer. However, first we have to file the case and go back to its main screen of my system. There we can continue this discussion. Oh, and I'll get rid of this stupid language pack. We won't have more time for jokes, I'm afraid. For now, well done, detective. I was unsettling. We have no record of a similar entity in my database. We're facing something completely new, so I'm afraid this will be a long, complex mystery to solve. Let me install a little upgrade. Done. I've added the details about the strange happenings surrounding the last case on the board. We still can't grasp the nature of that mysterious figure, but at least we have some understanding of what his powers are. I suggest we call him Rage for the meantime. Alert! New Nexus event detected. Okay, now an explanation is in order. Under normal circumstances, the true timeline is naturally resilient and can adjust itself if minor or rare changes occur. But if too many quantum alterations were to happen in a small time frame, well, history could break apart. Those connections of changes to the true timeline are called Nexus events. It is our duty to stabilize them before it's too late. We need to identify and revert any alteration made to the proper course of history, and we have to do it now. So that's also from the demo, if I'm not mistaken, unless they're giving us a new case to start off with. The Yellow Greedy Gear. This Nexus event is corrupting the Lost Age. The Lost Age, as its name suggests, is a forgotten period of your civilization. Until recently, there was no record of such an age, and to this day, its existence is shrouded in secrecy. Furthermore, many entries about the Lost Age in my database are classified at crimson level and thus unavailable. We'll have to figure some things out as we go. Here we are. The Lost Age. According to my readings, a violent crime is disrupting the timeline. We're looking for a corpse near the pyramids. Okay, this is new. Great. Great, great, great. Uh, it's not a goat. Let's see. Corpse near the pyramid. 
Did one of the mice die? Oh no! A little accident. Worker's accident. There, under the boulders is our victim. I detect trace of the impossibility. This wasn't supposed to happen. We need to learn how this event came to pass, prevent it, and find more clues so that we can understand what's going on. Okay, let's travel back. Oh no, we're not traveling back quite yet. Uh, figuring out how this happened. Well, I'm assuming it's this thing. But fine, clearly the winch broke and the boulders fell, crushing our victim. Can you see those tools near the winch? Someone was at work right there. Maybe you can see whether the machinery was sabotaged. Please wait a moment while I load a subroutine that will highlight structural failures on piece of machinery. We need to determine whether the machinery was sabotaged. Macro detail scanner loaded correctly. Scan complete. Report, it was indeed a structural failure. A cog fell apart. The image analyst shows numerous cracks on its most superficial layer, meaning a clear sign of wear. Unfortunately, our analysis also points out that all the other components were new. They were just a single faulty piece. That's very strange. taking this back in time. Remember, the tools we found near the poly? They must belong to someone. Someone was near the machinery just before it cracked. Okay, so now we're looking with someone who has a little toolbox with them. Uh, is this the toolbox? No, that looks like a brick. That definitely looks like a brick more than the toolbox. There's a toolbox. There's our worker. It seems his job was to perform upkeep on the police. We should reconstruct the worker's identity and check my records to see if there's any information about him. Very well. Database match subroutine loaded correctly. It's too bad that the database had no helpful information other than the name, Atten Blacktail. I have an idea. Let's follow Atten forward in time and see what he did after the accident. We should take a mental note to see whether there's anything unusual about his behavior. Pay attention, detective. Atten is the only worker with a black tail. I mean, isn't that very practical? Let's see. So he's down here. He's handing a receipt to the chief worker. He's probably trying to prove his innocence by pointing out that he bought new parts for the police as he was supposed to. Let's see what he did afterwards. still around the pyramid or has he left the area completely? Seems like he left. Hmm. 
serious? Buying yourself a giant cheese. And let's see. After that, where does it take that giant cheese? Looking for tiny mouse with giant cheese wheel. Does he go back to the pyramid? Doesn't look like it. himself a very fancy hat. Game agree, it is a fancy hat. Okay, so you now have bought yourself some fancy cheese, a fancy hat. What's the next thing you do? White look like him, but that looks like a darker tail, so I'm just gonna try. No, it isn't. Okay, good. A bit of a stretch that he had gotten an entire set of armor in that time. Um, let's see, where could he have gotten to? He had the fancy hat, he could have gone backwards. There's also all the portals, so we could have used any portal to move a lot further. A mouse in a very fancy hat. your fancy hat. Wouldn't make sense that he would go back to the pyramid. Come on, if he's wearing that fancy hat, it should be fairly easy to spot. Wasn't really a hat that you know was hard to or the spots. That little monkey is stealing things. That's not relevant for our current case. someone else. That looks like it's a cat. Being absolutely pampered. And those are cats. And that looks like the fancy hat, but that is not a mouse. You, you got yourself a pet alligator. Hi there, Commissar Kitty, and thank you for your subscription. There he is, pretty far from his period location. No doubt he's one of the glowing gates. The 
there were one of the Lost Age that could instantly transport anyone from one gate to another. Because their purpose is to travel between locations on Earth, they call them Earth Gates. That's a very useful technology. For them. For us though, they're a real problem. It's too hard to find someone in the city where he or she can move from one place to another quickly. Anyway, back to our investigation. What's that? A pet crocodile? Is he really buying the most exclusive animal of the Lost Age? A symbol of power and status favored among those blessed by the Eye of Ra? Wait, I mean like proper empathy and some other basic human features. But I'm pretty sure that workers during the Lost Age were generally unable to afford such luxuries. The cheese, the crooked headdress, the pet crocodile. How did Ethan get so much money? Let's try to reconstruct Athens' day from the beginning. Okay. We've seen Atten doing some upkeep on the pulley. Also, he was instructed to buy spare parts. He probably received those tasks from the work supervisor. Workers, as I believe was the cause until the very end of the information age, in and around the year 2010, usually received daily briefing from the supervisors. Okay, let's go back to the pyramid. And look for rat getting orders from supervisor. Forum only cheese. <laughs> there, as we suspect, the work supervisor gave Atten a list of parts to be bought and the money to do so. Let's see what happened next. Let's see. I'm assuming he went shopping. Parts. Sure of where the part shop would be though. Oh, there's the goat running around. Wait, was there anything here? No, that's souvenirs. That's elixirs. Oh, there he is. Parts. There, near the window of cheap spare parts. Wait, something's off. I can clearly read the temporal fluxation. The timeless is incredible frail in this particular tick. Look, in our image, the render's face is missing. She isn't real. Alternatively, she isn't real in the true timeline. Something is attacking the correct flow of history. I can't do much right now. I need my full computerial power to analyze this paradox. We'll have to solve the case first. Based on the appearance of the cogs in this makeshift shop, we can safely assume what happened. Still, we need proof. I'm betting those aren't the parts Atten was told to get. Let's try and decipher that list of his. Okay, so back to deciphering. Universal decryption subroutine loaded correctly. Detective, please use this tool to decipher Atten's checklist. We need to confirm our theory. Okay, so I need to go knife, bug, eye, knife, ank, wave. Uh, let's see. These two are the only ones that allow for, for that. So let's see. Let's try bug, eye, Knife, ank, wave. Okay. 
It's just what we thought. Adam was instructed to buy top quality pieces and was given enough money. Detective, do you see what happened? Something is trying to alter the proper course of events for unknown reason. To do so, our foe doesn't act directly, but tries to enable subtle changes that will cause ripples throughout the timeline. For example, something took the semblance of a cheap spare part vendor, in this case, inducing Atten to cheat his work superior. He bought an old cog for nothing and kept all the money to purchase luxury goods. However, we can't interfere with history and stop Atten right now because he still has to commit a crime. In any case, he somehow forged a receipt in order to secure an alibi. If we can get a glimpse of him doing that before the accident, we can have him arrested for fraud and prevent the accident from happening. Okay, let's see. So we last saw him here with the spare parts. So somewhere along the way, back, you should have forged those. So where is he? There he is. There, he's taking the price tag from high quality gear. Now we can send a very minor impulse back so that some guards will happen to notice him. Still, I wonder what will have changed history. Was it the death of an unknown worker or Athen posing as a master blessed by the Eye of Ra? Anyway, good job detective, you saw this case. However, I'm afraid it will be the first in a long series. Let's return to the mainframe and analyze the little bit of data we collected about the exclusive foe. Detective, that was quite unsettling. It seems Rage isn't the only entity trying to tamper with the true timeline. But good news first, you solved the case and started the long task of stabilizing the Lost Age Nexus event. Your current progress is 12.5. Speaking of bad news, however, while we were busy doing our job, there was a data leak in the Falkrond Stories archives. Keep I have events in human history. Detective, do you think you can help me piece together these stories? Take it as a secondary quest and the breaks between a one case and another. Thank you. And now back to more urgent matters. I'm running some tests on the data we gathered on our enemy, but it will take some time to obtain any meaningful results. While we wait, I suggest that we proceed with the next paradox menu, seeing the lost age. Very well. Let's continue. Ah, the brown belly goat, which was the other demo case. The Nexus event in the Lost Age is becoming more unstable at an alarming rate. My temporal scanners couldn't detect the variations as they occurred, but only once the deed was done. This can mean only one thing. Whoever is attempting to disrupt the timeline is well aware of our presence, and is trying to break the time continuum by flooding it with dozens of tiny, barely noticeable changes. Those little changes are like drops. One can't make any difference, but if you get enough of them, you can create a sea. Detective, I can see a temporal fluxation on the North Market Street. Something happened there. Indeed it did. Someone got their stall absolutely smashed. Oh, whoop. Too far south. There we go, there he was. Smash wares. This stall was destroyed entirely, as if an unstoppable force had run through it. The merchant appears to be desperate. Let me load my subroutine so that we can see if there are any details about him in our database. Error. Access denied. Data about subject Shushan is classified. Crimson level clearance is required. Oh well, it was worth a try. At least we know his name now. Well, let's see if we can access the nature of this unstoppable force. Okay, where's the goat? There you are. Just gotta be able to zoom in on you. There we go. Okay, 
It's a goat. There. A villain to be reckoned with. A destroyer of stalls. A, a goat? Why do they have to be goats? There's no telling what horror such a creature could wreck upon a defenseless city. Well, I guess we have our unstoppable force. Sadly, goats of the Lost Age weren't legally punishable. That became a thing only after the Great Goat Gorilla of 2356. Because we can't have that devious goat arrested, we should follow it until we find its owner. enough to hold the goat in his arms. Is he the owner or is the goat really the master? Let's find his identity, hoping we have enough clearance this time. Yeah, the best match subroutine loaded correctly. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Uh, how can I go back? Okay, I can't. Beak. Must have been. Yeah, he's a short beak. There we go. Good job, detective. A goat owner names is Ufa. Some sort of merchant he is. I can see from the database that he had a bit of rivalry with Trushan. Wait, I have an idea. I want to see what Ufa was doing while his goat from hell was raising Shoshan's stall. To be pretty happy, I guess he and the goat share an appetite for destruction. Everything about you is suspicious. Let's go back in time and follow him so we can confirm our suspicions. arguing with Trishan. By the look of the stones behind them, the two had an ongoing challenge. It was called Capitalism, and was quite a popular game between merchants of the Lost Age. Basically, the challenger could, would see who could make the most significant profit within a certain period of time. Back then it was just a game. Too bad it evolved into something quite dreadful. Well, enough with this, you realize. Let's follow Yufa during the game so that we can see how well he plays. go over on this side. Yes, he did. There we go. Absolute failure. Oh, this getting told off by its proper owner, I'm assuming. He's failing again. Three. 
Oh, there he is. As was to be expected, Yufa lost the game of capitalism and Shoshan is mocking him. As is this right? Usually those challenges include a wager of some kind. I believe we should decipher the stone tablet so that we can learn the full rules of capitalism. Universal decryption subroutine loaded correctly. Okay, so let's see. I need a lot of these. Then I need Is crystal clear. The loser will have to give his doll to the winner. Yufa has lost everything. I must admit, he seems like a nice guy despite his love for goats, and he doesn't deserve such a fate. Not in this ruthless age. Even so, he likely never had a chance or the courage to seek revenge. Or to shot in the true timeline. It also happens that way. So, jumping forward. Let's. We should locate Yufa again to find a way to undo this paradox. Yes, detective, I sense that you're becoming stressed about finding someone in a city where a suspect can instantly travel between earth gates. Maybe I can help. Just give me some time to install a new subroutine. We have a freemium you have a freemium subscription, so you can speed up the process by watching some ads. No? Okay then. Are you really sure about the ads? They're quite funny and they're targeted just for you. I know what you're like. Okay, okay, you said no, I get it. Installation complete. Great game, give me a button I do not have. Oh wait, it's just that one. Never mind. You should know the same that some objects called pivots vibrate at a particular frequency depending on the moment in time they're observed. Studying these objects make it possible to present a period with a melody. However, by touching this pivotal object, it's also possible to get an indication of the proximity of distortion in space-time. It's easy. Ice means far and fire means near. Try it. So this element returns fire, which means Yufa is nearby. Let's follow the merchant until we find the origins of the paradox. You can keep using the SFE analyze if you need to. Uh, how can I get rid of it? X. No. Not what I wanted. I just want it gone. Thank you. I'm not particularly fond of that system, I will admit. I mean, I'm sure it will be more useful in the larger worlds. I'm not familiar. This one I feel is fairly well contained still. Even if you can use the earth gates, it's still fairly... Fairly contained. There we go. Rage is found. Detective, can you see it too? That's the entity we called Rage. 
So it was his intervention that turned Yufa's frustration into a fit of anger strong enough to push him toward vengeance. As I suspected, our foes are attacking the timeline by orchestrating several minor changes. We can't let this happen. We know what Rage's powers are, and Yufa's in the throes of an uncontrollable fury because of him. We need to find a tick in time when Yufa is committing a crime so that we can have him arrested. go stealing a goat there fantastic work detective it seems that our goat owner was a goat thief Yufa stole the goat from this pet shop and unleashed its hellbound rage on Shoshan's doll I know it was funny but we can't let it happen the timeline is at a risk because we just seen Ufa steal a goat we can alert the guard and have him detained for rustling that way, Shoshan stall and Fortune will be safe. I'm sorry, detective, but the right thing to do isn't always the easiest one. Poor goat. Now we must return to the mainframe and see if we can collect more data on our foes. As usual, detective, good job! Tests are complete. It seems that Rage and our enigmatic shapeshifter have very similar energy signatures. That can't be a coincidence. Furthermore, these energy traces seem to be synthetic in nature, so it's probably able to reconstruct a pattern in the shapeshifter's one. That'd be a word or a code of some sort. Well, a name. Oblivion. I'm afraid we're out of time. I'm picking up a very strange signal for the information age. It's something I've never seen before, and by I, I mean the collective database of this agency. We have to hurry. Well, I've 60% completed with the information age. The turquoise fallen dame. Detective, the readings I'm receiving from the information age make no sense. As usual, we have a crime that shouldn't exist, thus leading to a paradox. But then, well, then my access to the timeline for this age is blurred. As if it's slowly being severed from the quantum continuum and if my scanners are being hacked. We have to hurry. The weird signal emanates from the cathedral. The crime must have happened nearby. I hope you can pinpoint the correct location. This anomaly is affecting our ability to discern the true timeline. Okay, cathedral. Whoop. Let's head over. Everything looks fine. I mean, this guy is throwing a rock at this chimp, which seems a bit harsh, but it's hardly a crime, I think. There we go, Fallen Dame. A statue has fallen on a tourist, but no one's around. I could almost consider this an accident if we weren't facing malicious entities. Something is going on. I can't fully access the time stream data of this particular tick. The reality of this moment in time is distorted. It's impossible. Nothing should possess this kind of power. Well, nothing but... Never mind. We'll talk about that later. First, we must understand what's going on. I could try to run a time defragmentation routine, though it will consume nearly all my energy. Do you have any other ideas? No? Well, let's get started and I hope I won't shut down. Am I still here? Good! Detective, in order to get a glimpse of what happened, we need to rebuild the temporal matrix of this exact time fragment. Okay, so I am... where? Which circle? Okay, 
you're being very annoying interface. But oh well. Uh, oh come on. No, not that one. One further in. Let's see. That one is not correct. Oh boy, do I wish I could play with something besides this controller right now. Um, controller is absolutely horrible. Either. I feel like nothing here properly lines up. Then I also feel like they keep moving where I don't want them to. There we go. Finally. Okay, now swap to the other one. And slowly but surely a line. There we go. Ooh, average. This is simply impossible. Whoever is causing this anomaly is using different fractal time matrices to alter the reality of this nexus event. In other words, our unknown foe can directly alter the past without relying on engineered coincidences. Theoretically, if we were to find all the fractal traces, we could revert their effect and restore the reality of this time frame. There's just one small problem. The matrices are almost impossible to detect, even for my scanners. So there's nothing we can do unless you can come up with one of your bright ideas. This new enemy is too powerful. Yes, detective, I'm listening. Are you suggesting that we use all my energy to boost my scanners? Are you sure? Wait, actually it could work, but I'll have to suspend my other routines, including my firewall and human interface. I won't be able to speak with you or help you, detective. Do you still want to proceed? Okay, diverting all energy to the time defragmation scanners, boosting time defrag subroutine. Remember, detective, we have to find four matrix. Okay, let's see. Near Sue. Near the Sue. Well, your hair. What, we're not reacting to the giant statue floating in the air? That's all fine. Uh, are we then concerned with these chimps who are playing rock, paper, scissors in front of the elephant? Or do we just want a symbol? Okay, we just wanted the symbol. Fine. Ah, I'm finding those symbols. On three. On three. Yaritab. I have no idea what that was supposed to mean. Didn't sound like a cathedral. 
restaurant up there. It's just a marketplace. Admit, finding it without even knowing what the clue means is gonna be a bit more tricky. But at the same time, it shouldn't be impossible. It's a fairly small world. So if I just work my way through it. by bit mm -hmm. so why is that rat commanding a little turtle army I have questions I have questions about that Let's see, uh, what was the log? Let me just see how I spell that again. R V Tav. Oh. be the name of one of the tiny shops around here. I wouldn't know that. Hmm. Where could you be? to figure out what that means. would be Oh, nice. It's the rat training to free little turtles. It's the ninja turtles. Cute. Doesn't help me fulfill my uh, my 
my mission though. Like a neat little world detail. Not very relevant to what I'm trying to do right now. Let's see. Yes, I could potentially try to use one of those little system things, but that feels like... That feels too much like using a hint on both of them. I don't really wanna. way on finding this thing. Mm. Tiny clock. Bust. Looks like a John Wick character. entire place now. I must have gone past it. It doesn't say me anything. It would be easy to hide it up here in the gardens, but that doesn't seem to be it. that since he directed all of the other thing yeah it's not working interference interference error okay so I can't even use the little hot cold tool even if I wanted to hmm Hmm. 
Yes, I also have absolutely no idea how well hidden these things are. Okay, more seconds soon. Good to know. Um... Well, chat, if you have any good guesses to what your retort is. Feel free to have a guess. Canary Sue was super easy, but that one... Doesn't even remind me of a real world. A real word, not world. Hmm. See, that's a cafeteria. And go back down to the pizza place, which I've looked at several times. We have the hairdressers. Hmm. Oh, there it is. There it is. I still don't see how that's what word that was supposed to be, but oh well. Holy, everything is holy. Okay, so that makes me believe it is over by the cathedral. That was easy. Castle we go. Looking for a mark. Oh, there it is. Time defrag subroutine aborted. Restoring standard functions. Done. Am I back? Detective, can you hear me? Thankfully. Now that we found all the matrices, we can restore this time fragment. How? Do you remember the CFE analyzer I installed during the Brown Billy Goat case? It can be attuned to time vibration and used to reconstruct reality. You can imagine this process as a tuning of a very, 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 very complex piece of music. If we play this fragment's original melody in time, the damage done by the fractal matrices will be reversed. Law, that doesn't help me. Uh, voila. Ray. Soul. Didn't even see what that one was. Ray. 
see. Uh, more salt. Me. And then Ray was you? No. Uh, me. I don't think Ray was over here. Probably should have made some notes about these instead. Okay, so that's Ra. So, here. Here. Fa. Um, what's the statue for? You made it. You found the four matrices and then used the CFA analysis to restore the fabric of reality by playing the correct melody. Of course, you weren't actually playing a melody, it's just the poetic way we use to represent time vibrations. Oh, that's a long time though. The reality is returning to normal. Great job, detective. But now we have to hurry to our mainframe and think about what happened. This new foe is terrifying. Detective, that was quite embarrassing. I'd be glad if we never talk about my behavior again. Yes, yes, I know. There are things more important than my pride. But for your information, for an AI like me, it's extremely humiliating to operate without the proper human interface. What we just faced was something very similar to rage and oblivion, even if its cap capabilities were vastly more potent. However, that display of power gave us a lead, for there is only one kind of entity that can interact with the time flow in such a way. An AI. Yes, detective. We're facing rogue AIs. Anyway, I'm afraid we won't have time to figure out what were just happening, or to make jokes about my behavior while we were using the time defrag subroutine. Our next event in the Lost Age won't be stabilized by itself. We have work to do. Let's continue with the last stage. Lost Age Nexus event stability, 25%. This time our foes haven't been settled at all. I discern strong temporal spike near the arena. Something pretty spectacular has just happened there. If left unchecked, the paradox could have immediate consequences on the true timeline. Okay, to the arena. Uh, I mean, something has happened here, I'm just not sure what. Oh, turned into stone. Okay. There. Well, detective, I'm afraid that you found this more than an incredible realistic statue. It seems an actual gladiator was just turned into stone. Don't be too surprised. During the Lost Age, many ancient technology, technological artifacts from before the fall of Atlantis were used. Like the earth gates or these energy spares they wield. Also, these two aren't ordinary gladiators. They had such important in the true timeline that I can't identi- that I can identify them without even loading the database subroutine. The Galakius and Sasha, lovers and heroes of yet-to-come Battle of Crimson Ribbons. Okay, enough for now. Let's continue our investigation. We should analyze Sasha's weapon. Something tells me this isn't just a stage prop. The 
data extraction subroutine loaded correctly. Atlantis technology inherited by subsequent populations after the fall were based on similar principle, but it's different from today's technology. This tool lets you extract information from machinery and devices. Using it, you should determine the exact nature of its this weapon. Okay, this is new. Oh, so it's um it's a memory matching game. That was also there. Upside down V was over here. And that is up here. last one. Analysis completed. Report, the weapon is combat ready and not decommissioned as it should be in the arena. Also, its security matrix has been cut off. I can't extract more information while the spare is turned off. We should go back in time and follow the weapon until we see how it ended up in Sus's hand. arena I mean there's one laying on the ground here but apparently that's not it is still there and it looks identical but apparently it's not it it wasn't oh. I, mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to try one more no still still not valid Is that weapon? Is it this one? Goat is trying to escape. How am I supposed to tell the difference between all of these weapons? Is there something I'm missing? Some detail on it, perhaps? Yes, it has a little little eagle on it. Uh, let's see. I can zoom out a little bit. Make it a bit easier for myself to navigate around here. It seems pretty far. With the earth gates, I'm taking no chances. That's not it. Oh, there it is. This little mouse is carrying it. I knew it. I sensed several fluxations similar to those emitted by the entity we faced during the yellow greedy gear case. This gladiator isn't real. Instead, it's a temporal entity we called Oblivion. It changes its shape to interfere with the flow of history. Maybe this time we'll be able to collect more data. But for now, we should focus on the case. Unfortunately, there's no point in locating a shape-shifting entity through time. However, we must find a way to save 
Gallicus from his mortal fate. Maybe there's a way to prevent the theft of the spear. If we could just analyze it, maybe we could figure out how to modify it and render it harmless. Let me see if I can read it thick when it turned, up, turned on before the accident. Yes, I found it. We should be able to follow its power signature. We're going back in time to track the weapon's position. Okay. So that means it could be absolutely anywhere. Energy tracking subroutine loaded correctly. So down here. Good boy. Nicely done, detective. So a guard used the spear to fend off some overly friendly alligator. Alligators are good pets, unlike goats. Anyway, if we're to perform a deep analyst of the weapon, we need to find a tick in time when it turned on but not wielded by anyone. Our scan can overload its ener energetic matrix and we don't want to create another paradox. Let's find a suitable tick. weapons around. Who knows where they went? It wouldn't make sense to bring it back to the arena yet. Hmm. That's the mouse buying the wrong parts. Goat is on the loose. Oh, come on, stop moving that much around. Look for the right weapon. Oh, there she is. deal. Where on earth is it? <sighs> That's a bunch of eggs. sense that it is up with the pyramids, but you never know. You never know. Not the right ones. I keep looking at them like they are, but it doesn't have the... I believe that's Horus? very shifty but you don't have anything to do with this case it would seem
there it is. I must have walked right past it. There, Fremel planted in the ground. It's most likely that the guard grew tired of fending off the alligators and put the activated energy spear there to act like a scarecrow of some sort. A scarigator! Energy analysis subroutine loaded correctly. We have to try to determine the inner workings of this ancient weapon. Thankfully, I have a tool for that too. With it, you'll be able to extract data from its energy signature. Wait, what? Oh no, not one of these sort of things. Uh, I've never been good at this. This weapon is a relic from old Atlantis. During the Lost Age, those who could uncover and restore ancient Atlantean technology rose to be the rulers of the societies. It is said that they were guided by a mysterious covenant called the Eye of Ra. Atlantean technology must draw energy from a resonating field formed by aligned power sources to work. Three great crystal powers this whole city. They're called Noxon. How do I know that? Well, not all Atlantean artifacts were lost in time. We have one at our disposal even today. It's very, very, very close to our HQ, I might add. What happens if we disable the Noxon for a short while? Detective, you're a genius. If we stop the resonating field during the right tick, Sussex's weapon will cease to function and Gallicus won't be turned to stone. However, we need to disable them in the right order. One mistake and we could blow up the whole city. No pressure. The Great Noxen are, well, big. They're so big that I could find them without your help if I only could perform even a single action without human approval. Anyway, according to my reading, the first one has a round vessel. A round vessel. See, that would probably be a really good clue. If I had any no idea of what a vessel is. They're really big. Round vessel. Probably mean pretzel. Say I remember having seen the giant pretzels around our heater in Nemi. Oh, it's been a long time since I had a proper good pretzel though. Ooh. That's a word that most people wouldn't know. A grooved ring or frame holding the cover of watch face, mobile phone, etc. in position. Okay. Uh, 
I'm not sure that made it particularly much easier. Holding something in place. A round object, ring or frame that holds it in place. Like, would this be a thing? No. Does it kind of look like a bit of a round frame of a mirror? That one eye. And of course there are all these on the statues, but that wouldn't make much sense. Because they're all identical. Same thing with this one. But it is kind of like a frame. Is it this one? Round frame? Ah, it is. Good job! This is a Nox Sapphire, and it supports the energy flow that permeates the city. We should be careful. Okay. Temporal link subroutine loaded correctly. We have a secure link with Nox, detective. Yes, I have a tool for this kind of stuff too. Is there anything you don't have a tool for? What advanced AI system would I be if I couldn't connect to other frameworks and manipulate their data? Anyway, the link won't hold forever. Deactivate the knocks now. What? Uh, external circle, internal circle, counterclockwise, clockwise. Okay. Seems a bit strange, but sure. I'll take it. Nox Sapphire deactivated. I can't detect any further damage to the true timeline. We didn't cause any long-term harm. The city's still here. Good job! Now let's find the next one. The second Nox has a square vessel. Okay, now I have a bit more idea of what they mean with that world. Bird. So... A similar thing to that, but square. I mean, this is clearly the triangle one, which we're probably gonna have to find later. Now we're looking for a square one. that the place is over in this area since all the other ones are over there but it doesn't seem to be the case Emerald, the one that maintains the stability of the signal that connects all the instruments powered by this ancient energy. Our intervention must be even more precise. Temporal link subroutine loaded correctly. Again, detective, try to shut down the Nox without causing any long term damage. change to swap the other one there we go and then okay that's 
and disable. Nox Emerald it activated without errors. Let's move on to the last one. It has a triangular vessel. I hate when it's crime o'clock. Terrible thing always seems to happen. Indeed, Savia Blobfish. Indeed. Ah, there's the last one. This is a Nox Ruby. Its structure is the most complex of the three. It has been modified several times over the centuries, so I have to be extremely precise. Okay. Give me the little puzzle. Temporal link subroutine loaded correctly. This is the last one, detective. You can proceed to deactivate it and silence all weapons in the city for a little bit. We have a job to do, detective. Please deactivate the turret Nox. Okay, so let's see. Uh, wait, how am I supposed to... Oh, seriously, what is, what is that function over there? Does that do anything? I then go with... No, not that button. Not that button either. I'm trying to get back to where I did the... Uh... There we go! has to be on those two. No. Nope. And then swap to the other ones. Which will then have to cross over here. Which will style reminds me of Rare's Charlie Puzzle Book. I can see that. I can definitely see that. The AI probably fools you into letting it rule the planet. At least that's what I would do if I was an AI. Well, in that case, Nemo Blob, I think we should all be happy that you're not an AI. We deactivated the three Noxen and with them all the weapons in the city. When the shapeshifter steals the spear, it will have a big surprise. We need to be sure the paradox is reverted and Gallicus is fine. Let's jump ahead a bit to check. And let's check in the arena that everything is now back to normal. Okay, not in the arena. Uh, where do we go then? Probably just supposed to find them wandering around in the streets. Ah, oh, there they are. They're fine and happy. There they are, safe and sound, our soon-to-be heroes of the Battle of Crimson Ribbons. We should hope they'll enjoy the next few years, for a grim winter looms. But that's in the future. Today, we saved a life and the timeline itself. We should be proud of ourselves. Sold. Wonder what our foes happened to achieve by creating this paradox. Did they want a specific side to win the war? Maybe they just wanted to spread distrust toward Atlantean technology. It could be, or maybe they're able simply to overload the timeline with paradoxes until it collapses. Anyway, good work, detective. This case is solved.
This wasn't an easy one, detective. You can be proud of yourself. Yes, of course you can ask something. Oh, I see. I'm afraid I can't help you with that. I'm not allowed to disclose information about the history of humankind if it isn't relevant to the current case. However, if you keep track of every detail, you should be able to put it together and discover hidden clues about your... past. Now, let's resume our scans. Alert, new Nexus event detected. Detective, it seems a third Nexus event is forming. The very first age of your history is in grave danger. Our foes are attacking Atlanta City itself. Yes, this is bad. Very bad. We should go. Now. Okay, I guess we're going to Atlantean age. Must have missed that during history class. Never really talked about the Atlantean age. What do they call those books where you're at? I think they've localized names for every language. Um, we had... Uh, do we have Wally or Waldo? I can never... Oh no, we have Willy. Where's Willy? Atlantis was the most advanced civilization in history. Even now, some device from this area still eludes our comprehension. Above all, the area was a utopia, a perfect world. Citizens spent their days practicing arts or playing sports that entertained the entire population. It was like a dream. But just like a dream, it vanished after a terrible fall. But even if this great city is doomed to the end one day, we must preserve it right now. But yeah, I used to love those books when I was a kid. I used to always borrow them during the summer vacation and then do all the, uh, the extra bits in the back where you had the extra tasks. We detected an irregular energetic outburst in the Tower of Leisure. It can't, I can't imagine the consequences. Maybe something was destroyed or disintegrated. In any case, the timeline is in danger. They were good books. The thing is, I borrowed them um, in the library. And that was fine, but sometimes... Sometimes there would be one kid who clearly hadn't had their parents watch them close enough, so they had drawn drawn with pencils and colors in the books and circled everything. And it's like, mm, watch your kids when they were doing library books. Like, ruin the fun for everyone else. I mean, the only thing I can see that's disintegrated is this little little puddle here but that isn't it um let's see what exactly did you say the tower of leisure is this the tower of leisure i mean it's a tower and these people look very upset but i can't see i see anything disintegrated there this this person looks very upset about letting a demon thing out of a jar, but... Let's see, is there any other towers besides that one? Like, that seems like the most tower, but maybe it's this one? The library one? There's something disintegrated here, I think. No. Apparently that's just how it's supposed to be. Hmm. Also that's more like a tower of knowledge, if anything. There's a bunch of books that's been absolutely ruined. But I'm not sure if I would call that disintegrate. Then you have a tower of art. Tower of food and play. Again, they seem very worried. 
Is this something that's disintegrated? A pile of dust with a broken mask on top of it. This is our energetic outburst, but what was reduced to dust and how? We need to analyze these remains in order to understand what happened. Universal biochemical analysis subroutine loaded correctly. Okay, so let's see. So... If I move you over here... Then I can move you over here. You can then go over here. Uh, you can then go over here. And you can also go over here. That way clearing the path for you to go over there. And then there's more than enough room for you to join in on this side. Oh, it's timed now! Oh dear! I did not notice that it was timed! Well, now I really wish I was playing with mouse and keyboard because, again, this would be a lot faster with a mouse and keyboard. I did not notice that the timer was going. Makes sense though. Makes sense that I would increase the difficulty by throwing in a timer. Indeed, Nemo Blob, it is pressure now. According to my readings, this seems as if a living being was reduced to ashes. It's fairly unusual. Wonder how it happened. First, look at the other half of the mask. We have to look around. A mask piece can't move by itself. Someone must have moved it, but who? Okay, and very spooky music or ominous music. Uh, let's see, look for the other half of the mask. Let's see, it looks like a smiling mask with a bit of a more closed eye. Let's see. You're holding a mask, but it looks to be the same side. But let's try it anyway. Like that looks to me like it would be the same side, but oh well. Here's the other half of the mask held by an Atlantean citizen. My curiosity is piqued as to who he is. According to my archives, the citizen is no one. Well, he is someone. His name is Cabius, but he really hasn't done anything worth mentioning in his life, except for a mushroom and Moloch dish he created. Good to know. Maybe it's the same style on both sides? Could be. And it is brutal to say he's never accomplished anything in his life. Okay, so Cepheus is unrelated to the crime and picked up the mask out of curiosity. We need to go back to when the mask was a hole. Very well, let's travel back in time. Okay, uh... No one there. The artist is over here. But where's the mask? Oh. Where is the mask? That looks like a mask.
This is the victim before it was pulverized. The victim's identity is Kario, also known as the Cyan Mask. He was the first actor to play a guardian in a piece. Ah yes, I didn't explain why there are guardians in a utopia like that. Many other realms were jealous of Atlantis' riches and technology. Guardians are defenders of the city. Maybe he was targeted by an enemy of Atlantis, someone external to the city itself. To unravel this mystery, we need to figure out where the energy outbursts come from. Okay, we go further back in time. Actually, we go all the way back almost. We go to take two. Energy tracking subroutine loaded correctly. This is the moment in time when a very powerful energy trace was still active, just before it vanished. Trace the location of the energy source. Well, I'm assuming these will also be shorter then. Because so far they've given me ample amount of time and I've even been allowed to click the wrong button. Crystals. This is unexpected. The energy signature we analyze is almost identical to the one emitted by the temple's crystals. Those crystals are the founding stone of Atlantean technology. The big one is the Crimson Tear. It emits the force It keeps the city floating over the raging waters. Yes, detective. The Noxen we disabled during the Green Lantern's case have a similar nature and equally unknown origin. I wonder why anyone would remove a crystal from its location and use it as a weapon. We need to investigate. Anyone who interacted with this crystal could be the culprit. Okay, and we go back to... No, we get forward to take three. Okay. Well, this guy is going up in a ladder. Oh, that was easy. If investigations were that simple, you would need adv advanced AI support because humans could handle them on their own. According to the records, the citizen on the ladder is Pavati, one of the temple priestesses. We need to understand what she's doing. Because she reached the crystal immediately before they were taken off, Pavati is now our suspect. We should follow her and learn what her intentions are. Okay, I don't feel like I got a really good look at how she looks, but we can try. Hopefully she hasn't moved too far. Ah, there we go. Holding a crystal, which looks surprisingly a lot smaller. Uh, and let's see, where do they go? Where do they take them? Oh, over here. Oh, these are the crystals that I looked at for the disintegration thing, because I thought they looked strange. With the Tower of Knowledge. Here they are. Apparently they were giving the crystals to someone. From the records, his name is Dorado, and he's a gem worker. I think I know what's happening. Atlantis crystals were periodically maintained to prevent deterioration. Gem workers took care of them, employing techniques that have unfortunately been lost over time. When Pavati gave the crystal to Dorado, its energy was still stable. We can remove her from the suspect list and replace it with the gem burger's name. Dorado may have manipulated the crystals to make them have energetic outbursts. But why? Let's follow him. Okay, so where does he go? Does he go straight up to the tower? Yes he does. And then he smashes it with a hammer. This. I don't think it's one of the ancient techniques we discussed earlier. Look at his gaze. He seems to be hitting the crystal angrily, despite the fact that his job is to keep the crystals from getting damaged. What's the reason Dorado is angry? In Atlantis, such a feeling shouldn't exist. Not yet, at least. The Great Fall is yet to come. 
I agree, detective. Someone altered the correct flow of time. Let me check the data I collected. As we suspected, my reading indicates an unusual energy trace in the past tick. If someone has altered the flow of events, thereby affecting Dorado, we need to find that person. Okay, so back in time again we go. And then we need to find Dorado again. And he's over here with Rage. That's Rage. As usual, his disappearance before we could lock onto his signature. He manipulated Dorado's mind so that it would experience uncontrollable fury. However, unlike other eras where we solve cases, we can't call the police. Guardians weren't created to fight crime in the city. In any case, we can't let Dorado destroy the crystals and accidentally cause Kiro to disintegrate. I have an idea. Rage is trying to accelerate the fall of Atlantis by spreading violent emotions. Countermeasures must be used in order to preserve the city until its inevitable downfall, as recorded in the true timeline. To solve this case and defend the city from future attacks using this strategy, we might need to be unorthodox in following our procedures. However, I need your authorization to proceed. Do I have it? Thank you, detective. Here's the plan. During the Turquoise Falling Dame case, we used the CFE analysis to restore reality, playing the time melody. It's a very versatile tool. We can use it to fix the time vibration, but also to alter them. For instance, we could insert a new time melody in this age and overwrite the old one. In this way, we can create a slightly different timeline to add the idea of crimes of wrath in the Atlantis era, thus giving the city the means to defend itself. Until, well, you'll see. Change the melody of this time fragment. Can you play that again, please? No? I was not prepared. That was C. Fa. More C. More Fa. Do. I really wish you could better see it behind the um, behind the glass there. That's me. It's a thing. Oh, really? I have to zoom in on it? Rare. Uh, I think I said this was me. No, that was Sol. Uh, was this statue me? No, that was Thor. even see it because it's hidden behind me okay rare me were you do do uh me again Though. Wrath. Done, we've inserted in the minds of the Atlanteans the idea of a crime of wrath. It's a sin if you wish. Okay, and therefore they will create police and we can stop it? Data up you skated in Inoculation subroutine loaded correctly. Now the last part of the plan. We can arrest Dorado. We just need to alert the Guardians by sneaking into their systems. The Guardians are synthetic creatures, but they are powered by energy crystal. As such, they can be hacked. 
In modern terms, we can explain it like this. They have a consciousness protected by a framework that's like a firewall. The tool is made to infil this tool is made to infiltrate advanced and secure systems. We can use it to bypass their firewalls. Oh, and it's of course it's a time thingy. What do you even want me to do? What? What's the purpose? Okay. Isn't that correct? On everything? No, not this one. Oh, and you reset. Darn it. Oh, come on. Give me the thing. Okay, now I don't have controls at all. That's great, game. That's the perfect time for you to decide that my controller will no longer work. other ones I guess. Mm, nope, they don't want to work either. Besides, it's correct now, so it shouldn't be a... Uh, shouldn't even be an issue. Oh. Let's just go out and go back in. The controller is working fine otherwise. It just doesn't want to allow me to do anything with these. That's a problem. And it just restarts and there's nothing I can do. Okay, if I exit close the software I'm currently using and restart the software. Will that fix it? I really hope it will. And I hope I didn't lose too much. Okay, do I have to do everything in this world over again? Science Splinter. Yes. Okay, uh, we're skipping the text. Because we already had that. Tower of Leisure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Timeline is in danger. Sure, 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 sure. I just want to see if we can get past that now, or if it's like a permanent bug thing that I actually need to... Need to report. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's just it got stuck and struggling because of it. Let's see, that's the broken mask. Uh, the other part of it. Oh no, first I had to do this thing. First I had to do this, and this was also timed forgotten about it. Wait, this is different. No! Come on. Slightly the other way around. Or different symbols perhaps? Come on, go over there. Oh. Anyone considering this game, I really recommend you get it on PC. The Switch version is not worth the hassle as far as controls go. I 
should have just been patient and waited for the this, this Steam version to come out instead of wanting to play it early on Switch. But oh well. Let's see, other half of the mask. Good, good, good. Let's go back. Oh, let's see. Look for the whole mask. The whole mask was over here. That was Cario. And then we go further back. And we go to the energy tracking. Which is pretty straightforward. Which leads us to the crystal. And then we go further back to figure out who tampered with the crystals. Select the priestess. Actually, have her in focus would be great. There we go. Okay, and then it was where did she take it? I still don't get how that one big crystal gets turned into these three tiny pieces, but oh well. Because those pieces are tiny in comparison to that giant crystal. And there they are giving the crystals over. Oop. Over to maintenance with Dorado. That's fine. The crystal smallifier. A common piece of Atlantean technology said a lost to us. Probably, I wouldn't even be surprised at this point. Apparently Atlantean technology is just the just a salvation to all of this world's problem. Just make something up and call it Atlantean technology. It's fine. There we go, rewinding to figure out why he's upset, and then we find him over here with rage. And then let's see. I really wish also there was something like a way to save. Is there? No. Uh, if I go plus. No. No, there's nothing. Oh, and there was this thing again. Oh no. Uh, please tell me that it's the same thing. Because I remember. I remember what I pressed. And it is. The symbols, we get wrath. So now we're going back to hack the things, and that's where thing went wrong. And hopefully, this time that won't be an issue. Let's see, that's one solved. back put it one more this way and then go up and turn it further come on further no further there we go 
Must be pretty hard to be a guardian without the concept of negative emotion. I would assume it's pretty, pretty strange. Great job, detective. For a human, you are a particularly effective subject. I'm starting to think we'll make a good team. Oh, by the way, I appreciate if this little trick stayed between the two of us. Thank you. Now that we're getting a little clear this case solved, we should focus on the important thing. Rage. Seven minutes and 24 seconds. <laughs> Can pretty much guarantee that was not the time we were looking at first time. I wonder if there's a pattern in our foes' actions, or if they simply want to sow the seeds of chaos. What was Ray trying to do? Why eliminate someone who strove for innovation and technology? Is there a specific outcome they want from the timeline? Anyway, good job, detective. <laughs> okay, let's see. Detective? You're very silent. I know. What we did was pretty reckless, but it turned out great, don't you think? Look, as long as the true timeline remains intact, we can afford some minor changes. Our foes are relentless, you saw that. We had to give Atlantis some means to defend itself. Still not convinced? Well, that Nexus event is far from stabilized. Actually, it's just... 12.5%, so why don't we go back there and solve another abnormality? That way we can see whether everything is the way it should be. Well, let's do one more case in Atlantis. We're back in Atlantis. As you can see, the city is the same. But it won't be for long if we don't stabilize the Nexus event. I'm reading an anomalous space-time distortion that's emanating from the main plaza. Please be careful, this is very different from our previous cases. Okay, is it now the puddle that I found suspicious and thought was someone who had disintegrated earlier? This thing, the slime. Really? No? What is it? Is it just this broken boss? Because this seems like the main plaza. I mean, there's also this thing that kind of looks, uh, looks like a suspicious shape forming with the gauntlet. Like, it doesn't look good. <laughs> I mean, that must be the main plaza, right? Uh, this guy doesn't look like he belongs in Atlantis. That's another thing. Is that it? No. Apparently not. Everything else looks fine, though. I mean, sure, this guy's a bit upset about this crab who's taken something. But that seems perfectly normal. Yeah, I see you glowing in their hint function. Still refusing to use you. What is it, then? Is it the guards themselves in the fountain? It shouldn't be. Is it the little portal? Okay, I thought that portal had been there before. Distortion found. Wait. 
This shouldn't be possible. The distortion is altering the fabric of reality as if a specific moment in time and space was being rewritten. Additionally, there's a lingering trace of quantic energy. Before the distortion, there was something else, something incredibly powerful. Something has been stolen. Could it be? We need more details, detective. Let's go. Look for clues near the fountain. I mean, I still think this guy doesn't look like he belongs in this period, but... Game still says that it's fine. Uh, is it now the puddle of slime? Now it's a puddle of slime. Ink? Good job, detective. Did you find some traces of ink? That certainly doesn't seem like a time warping, reality altering substance. Warning, warning. New distortion detected. This ink can wait, but we must hurry. Whatever is happening is happening fast and it isn't stopping. Energy tracking subroutine loaded. Another distortion is forming. Somewhere or something is rewriting reality as we speak, in real time from within the timeline. We have to find any distortion now. Track its energy and pinpoint its position. Very well. There, another distortion. Again, I detect spiced and quantic energy. Something really powerful was there just a second ago. There's no doubt, it was a sacred stone. Detective, are you familiar with the Eternity Saga? The ancient tale about the all-powerful sacred stone of Atlantis? Well, it isn't just a legend. The heroes, the portals, all of it. It's all true. Such sacred stones existed during the Atlantean Age, and we haven't yet understood how they functioned. If I weren't a rational atheist AI, I'd call it magic. Someone is stealing the sacred stone and causing these distortions. The fountain used to hold the sacred stone of space, while the statue was the altar of the sacred stone of power, a boundless energy source for the whole city. Yes, was I talking too much? The ink, you say? Yes, the ink. It's near the statue. Follow the trail. It's our only clue. Are we going to be brought back to what I said was the infinity gone? Infinity Gauntlet. Does it certainly feel like it? Yes, it, we are. There it is. The ink trail leads to the infin Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, come on. That is ink trail. There we go. The Gauntlet. There. Wait. What? Did he just disappear? I could stabilize the image and photograph it. There's only an echo, just like distortions we detected. My senses couldn't collect correctly read his image, as if he was co clouded and severed, severed from the true timeline. Just that thing was visible. Yes, detective, that was the Eternity Gauntlet. Ah, yes, not Infinity Gauntlet. That would be copyrighted Eternity Gauntlet, as described in the saga. Whoever was in front of us just used his power to tap into the Sacred Stone of Space and vanish. It would have required an enormous amount of energy, too. Now that we know he's using the Eternity Gauntlet, we can analyze his power signature and extract some intel about our mysterious villain. Energy analysis subroutine loaded correctly. Okay, so then it was this thing again. I needed to be a bit taller, a bit more spiky. There we go. Analysis complete. I was able to recover some biometric data on the wielder of the gauntlet. It is enough to reconstruct this image. I'm afraid, but at least it's something to give us a clue. 
His biometric indicators are compatible with those of the Squid family, a powerful and wealthy house of this age. Unfortunately, the Squids were legion, so we need more clues to identify a villain. I wonder if he's purple. Warning, warning. As you speak, a new distortion is forming inside the Tower of Arts. Okay, let's see. The Tower of Arts was over here. Let's see, this was knowledge. Art was over on this side. Wasn't it? I felt like it was right next to the Tower of Knowledge. Oh, there it is. Another distortion. Sacred Stone of Soul. That's the new distortion, and there's another stolen sacred stone. This one was the Sacred Stone of Soul. A charm enabled to bestow almost everlasting life on the chosen denizens of the Great Atlantis. What, detective? Why didn't I tell you this before? Uh, because I couldn't. Most information about the Sacred Stones require crimson level clearance in order to be accessed. I'm only allowed partial access to them. Well, it's essential for the solution to a case. Have you ever wondered why the Eternity Saga is considered a legend but not history? It isn't because its end game was lackluster, but because someone chose to. Someone wise, I might add. Well, enough of that. Look there instead. More ink. Let's see where the ink trail leads us. Okay, follow the ink trail. And there he is. There. No. He vanished again. But we can at least analyze the lingering energy once again to learn something more about him. Energy analysis subroutine loaded correctly. Piece of information. Our thief has a beard. We still need more clues, but we don't have the means to get more. However, I'm pretty sure a bearded squid will try and seize another stone. I'll scan for more distortions. We found one in the Tower of Knowledge. Let's go. What I fear, the sacred stone of mind has just been stolen. The collective memory of every being that ever lived in Atlantis. It's a living graveyard. Why do you ask? Why has the knowledge of the sacred stones been hidden? It happened years ago. I had just been activated and received my name. Iwi. I was different. A newborn, if you wish. For even AI must learn and grow. It was the very first day of our organization. Nevertheless, we uncovered the truth about the sacred stones. Then we chose to classify it. Why? Because some truths are dangerous. Power, infinite knowledge, and immortality must be dreams, but not historical facts. Again, why? It's because we saw how Atlantis fell. I'll say no more. We should leave this library and follow the ink trail again. gotten far. Energy analysis subroutine loaded correctly. He's a squid. He has a beard. What else can we get, detective? Oh. 
and lies complete. I was able to reconstruct his clothing image. It's a peculiar tunic with a triangle emblem. According to my database, that was the garment of Atlantean priests. They were sworn to protect relics and knowledge, and the church was known as the Crimson Vow. Well, now we should have sufficient clues to identify our thief. Let's go back in time and catch him. We need to find our Crimson Vow Priest. He's a squid, he has a beard, and he wears a tunic with a triangular emblem. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, let's begin up here. Oh, too far. Uh, this is an arena for playing things and spores. That's not where he would be. A squid with a beard. That looks like a squid with a beard and a triangular robe. Mm, no. Game says it's not. At least it's not the right one. Hmm. Also a squid, but not the right uniform. Also squids. You seem to have a beard. I would also say you have a beard. Can't really say why you would know that it was that one instead of the other, but... Great detective, you found him. So he's a priest, but he isn't an ordinary one. His name is Sephron, High Conundrum of the Crimson Vow. Here we have one of the few Atlanteans to survive the fall. But he isn't behaving strangely or wielding the legendary gauntlet. We need to find when and how all this madness began. Let's move forward. Okay, at least now we know how he looks. Let's see. Where does he go? He goes over here. There! Wait, what happened? It seems the Eternity Gauntlet appeared from nowhere, as if an invisible force moved it from its sanctum to, well, to float over this brazier. Oh, I see. This is the moment where Sephiram broke all his vows and decided to go against the city. This was all it took, a mere second. A legendary artifact appeared in front of him, and Sephiram unleashed his darkest impulses. From what we know, he could have lived a normal life without ever letting his worst side prevail if it wasn't for this moment. I bet this was another engineered coincidence. The work of our true enemies. Somehow they now possess the power to alter reality itself. But first we must con concentrate on Sephiron. If we don't stop him, he will destroy the true timeline by stealing the sacred stones that were supposed to bring about the Great Fall. I know, we shouldn't mess with time. But if we don't do it, the timeline will collapse. I just need your permission, detective. I can't do anything on my own. Thank you. You won't regret this. Here's the plan. We can't make the gauntlet disappear, so we must stop the priest. In order to do so, we need the guardians to intervene. And the guardians need to a proper reason to detain the priest. Yes, we should provide them with the concept of another crime. Since we started with rat, I believe greed will be appropriate for this situation. Okay, so we're just giving them concept that they don't have and are not supposed to have? That doesn't seem like a good idea, but oh well. Okay, uh, this was dough. And then dough again. And then me, which I believe was this little thing. And then back to Doe. 
Oh, come on. So, back to me. And then Ray, which was this little bush. Come on, little bush. Fine, I can zoom in on you a bit if you want, but you were the one who gave me Ray. There we go. Okay, now we have given them greed as well. It worked. In the Atlantean age, they will now perceive greed as a crime. This will cause the civilization a little... But this will change the civilization a little bit, but not enough to cause time flow problems. I'm not sure I trust you on that, but sure. Of obfuscated data inoculation subroutine loaded correctly. To complete our plan, we need to sneak into the Guardian system and alert them. Oh, not this thing again. Uh, okay, um... I need this to be an S. And then I need this also to be an S. And then I need this to be that. There we go. Okay, we have created greed. It's done. Now the guardians will detain our priest before we can use the Trinity Gauntlet. Good job, detective. We saved the true timeline. And thanks for trusting me. Still, something is amiss. The reality of a tick was rewritten. Someone was able to alter the position and the existence of different objects, including something as powerful and arcane as the Trinity Gauntlet. As you just saw, even in our interface, everything this force has altered is distorted and flickering. Something like that is bound to have left some energy traces throughout this period of time. If we go back to the mainframe, I should be able to analyze them from a, a temporal point of view. Detective, let me perform a quick quantum scan of the whole Atlantean age. Scan complete. As we suspected, someone was able to use a vast amount of energy in order to rewrite some aspect of the Atlantean Age reality. Someone other than us, of course. The energy signature I detected is compared to the ones of the entity we already faced, and I reconstructed its serial pattern, Chimera. It seems we're now facing four different rogues, AI. Rage, capable of controlling human emotions. Oblivion, a shapeshifter nearly impossible to detect. Chimera, a malicious trickster able to rewrite reality and a yet unnamed foe who can deconstruct the temporal matrix itself. The AI's mainframe is probably located somewhere in our age or in the future. To defeat them, we have to find a way to access the mainframes. Alert, alert, new Nexus event detected. Detective, it's clear that our enemies won't give us time to devise a strategy. I've detected the presence of yet another Nexus event. We need to focus our attention on the Steam Age. Well, uh, however, I think that's a good place to call it for today. Which I think, yeah, it seems to have auto save. There's no, there's no save function, so. I'm just gonna assume that it auto saves there. Thank you everyone for stopping by and watching. I appreciate it. My next stream. Well. Not necessarily my next stream, but the stream I will be partaking in nonetheless is tomorrow's co op stream with Beware the Blobber where we will be playing Discworld Norir over on his channel. Uh, that's tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. my time. If you look at the schedule, it should show you when it is in your time. Uh, after that, I have a short FMV game on Sunday, 
which is called One Day. And we will be continuing uh, this game for the rest of the Fridays until we complete it. Hopefully within this month. Hopefully I can do this in three, three streams. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Regardless, thank you all for joining in. And until next time, goodbye.